In this lesson video, I'm going to show you some techniques for improvising over the Bill Withers classic tune, Ain't No Sunshine, including a really cool trick to make the pentatonic scale sound even cooler. Jay Metcalf here from bettersax.com. And before we get started, if you like free saxophone lesson videos like the one you're about to watch, do me a favor and drop me one of these right now. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel in case somehow you aren't already. Throughout this lesson, I'm going to be using the great backing track for Ain't No Sunshine that comes from bettertracks.com. It's part of the new collection of backing tracks called Groove and Soul Standards Volume 1. With this lesson, there is a free PDF to download, and that you will find in the Better Sax shed. I've linked to both of those things in the description below. Now, before we get into the improvisation, I have to reiterate because it's so important. Whenever you're learning a new tune, you got to start with the melody. And I strongly suggest you start by listening to recordings of that melody first. A lot of people will skip over that and try to find the sheet music to learn the melody. You're never really going to learn a melody properly just from the sheet music. Even if you've heard Ain't No Sunshine a million times, it's a good idea to go listen to Bill Withers sing it to get some ideas for phrasing and you know where to place the melody notes rhythmically. Now, this is a great melody to learn by ear because it's entirely made up of the minor pentatonic scale with one extra note. I've made a bunch of videos about learning melodies by ear, and I've even created an entire free course about it. It's called the Play Sax by Ear Crash Course. So if you want to learn how to learn melodies Similar to this one, by ear, I strongly suggest you take that course. It's free, linked in the description below as well. Now, once you got the melody learned, your next step can be to figure out how to improvise over the chord changes. Ain't No Sunshine is a great song for beginning improvisers to work on because the harmony is so simple. There's only three chords and they're all minor chords. Now, speaking in concert key here, the chord progression to Ain't No Sunshine is four bars of A minor, then one bar of E minor, one bar of D minor, and then two bars of A minor. That gets you this eight bar phrase that makes up most of the song. Now let's go over a few tools you can use for improvising over this chord progression. The first one is very simple. It's just using the A minor pentatonic scale over the whole thing. Listen to me play over that eight bar progression just using the A minor pentatonic scale. Now, there's nothing wrong with improvising over this chord progression just using that one minor pentatonic scale, but you might start to feel a little bit limited in your ability to express yourself after a while. We can upgrade that minor pentatonic scale to the blues scale by adding one note, the flatted fifth. Here's an example of improvising over those eight bars with the blues scale only. <laughs> Again, there's nothing at all wrong with that, but it can start to feel a little bit limiting and restrictive after a while. So let's explore what happens when we add some more note possibilities. What we're going to do now is we're going to apply different modes to the chords. So the first chord is A minor, and we can play the A Dorian scale over that chord. Now, when we get to the next chord, which is E minor, you might logically think, oh, let's play the E Dorian mode over that chord as well. But no, we're not going to do that because of the harmonic context of the song. When we get to that E minor chord, we're going to play E Aeolian. The reason is we want to keep that C natural going. We want a flat six on this five chord. It's going to sound better overall. Now you may notice that E Aeolian has the exact same notes as A Dorian. So we haven't changed any notes. We're using the same collection of seven notes for the first five measures of the progression. When we get to the next chord, which is a D minor chord, you might say to yourself, 
Can we play the Dorian mode here? And yes, we can. We're going to play Dorian over the D minor chord. You will now notice that there is one note different. There is one note that is not the same between D Dorian and the other two scales we've already used. And since the next two bars are the same as the beginning, A minor, there is really only one measure in this eight bar progression where we need to adjust our note choices. So one way to think of playing modally over this chord progression is to play your notes from that A Dorian scale over all of it, except for when you get to the four chord, that D minor, at that point, you've got to make sure that you're playing an F natural. That's the only note that changes, and just for that one bar. Here's an example of me improvising over the chord progression just using those modes I mentioned. <laughs> We're getting some more options for notes and colors, and things are starting to sound a little bit more interesting. If any of this stuff about modes or chords is going over your head and you'd like to really learn it properly, I strongly suggest you check out my Harmonic Foundation course, which you will find over at bettersax.com. It covers all of the music theory and chords and scales that we need to improvise in all popular styles of music. Now, the next technique we can use for improvising over these chords is, again, pentatonic scales, but this time we're going to use a different pentatonic scale for each chord. So we're going to stick with the A minor pentatonic scale for all the A minor chords. On the E minor chord, we're going to play E minor pentatonic. And on the D minor chord, we're going to play D minor pentatonic. Here's an example of what that might sound like. And finally, here's the cool trick I told you about in the beginning that's going to make your pentatonic scale sound even more cool and hip, let's say. What we're going to do is play the minor pentatonic scale starting on the fifth of each chord this time. So for A minor, we're going to play an E minor pentatonic scale. And for E minor, we're going to play a B minor pentatonic scale. And for the D minor chord, we're going to play an A minor pentatonic scale. Have a listen to what that sounds like. think, oh, that sounds a little bit out and angular, and I'm not sure if I like that. Um, that's fine. You don't have to use that one uh, if you're not really ready for that color, but it's a great way to kind of push the boundaries of what you've been playing, and none of those notes are outside of the harmony, by the way. Um, it's just kind of grouping the notes differently creates this effect. There's more tension, but everything is still diatonic to the chords. Now, things really get interesting when you start mixing up all of these techniques. There's really not a lot of notiness going on here. We're just playing notes that come out of the scales that go with those chords, but we're organizing them differently. We're thinking about these groups of notes in different ways. So, now I'm going to leave you with a longer solo where I'm just kind of improvising freely, but I'm using all of these techniques here and there, mixing it up according to what I'm feeling and hearing in my head at the moment. Remember the backing track that you're hearing me play over comes from bettertracks.com. Go check that out if you're looking for some great backing tracks. And also, don't forget to download the free PDF of this lesson, which has all of, all of these different techniques written out for you so you can go practice them along with some backing tracks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.